Hi, I'm Stephen Feuerstein, and I write practically perfect PLSQL. Greetings and welcome to the PLSQL channel, a series of video trainings on the Oracle PLSQL language. My name is Stephen Feuerstein, and I'm a PLSQL developer just like you. This lesson is the latest in my series on programming with collections, array-like structures in PLSQL, and the topic at hand is defining and using collection types. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about defining collection types because when you work with a collection you're actually working with a variable and since it's a variable you have to define the type on which it's declared so the collection type has to be defined before you can work with a collection of that type now Oracle offers several predefined collection types that you can use in your own code most prominently and most commonly referenced would be the collection types in DBMS SQL and in DBMS output in which you'll find basically a series of the standard types of collections like a list of strings or a list of numbers. And if you want to take a look at the code for those packages and see what types are defined, you can visit the RDBMS home, and that depends on your particular instance of Oracle, but then the RDBMS admin directory. Let's take a look. In my Windows installation, RDBMS, the RDBMS home directory, is all of this and then I get down to RDBMS admin and what you'll find in this directory are all the files that Oracle uses to create the built-in packages the data dictionary views lots and lots of stuff so the DBMS SQL package is in DBMS SQL SQL lots of comments and here's the create or replace package DBMS SQL and what you'll find further on in the package are a series of different types of array structures so we'll talk about the syntax for all of these in a moment but here's a list of strings maximum size 32k a list of strings maximum size 256 collections of records here's a number table string table date table so these are predefined types that you can use in your own code for example if I wanted to, to declare a list of strings I could say declare my list dbms sql var car 2 table and that would be a collection type that I can use in my own code. Of course, most of the time you're not going to be using a predefined type, you'll be using your own types. But again, those are, the, those are available for you if you just want to fall back on a, on a quick default. Lists of strings, numbers, and so on. Okay, but you're going to mostly declare your own collection type specific to your application. There are three different types of collections, associative arrays, nested tables in vArrays, and each one has their own variation on the type statement that you use to define your collection type. So with an associative array, you use the type keyword to indicate you're declaring a new type for PLSQL, and then is table of. Now you might wonder, why doesn't it say is collection of? And that's because the syntax is from all the way back in Oracle 7, and back then these were called PLSQL tables. So it's a table of the data type, is it a table of strings, of numbers, of dates? And then index by. The associative array type statement always have the index by clause in it, and it can be indexed by string or integer, which we'll talk about later in a lot of detail on associative arrays. So it's type, is table of, index by. That's an associative array type. Nested tables. Nested tables use the keyword type, is table of, just like an associative array, but no index by. The only difference between these two types in their definitions is that the nested table type doesn't seem to have an index. As it turns out, and as you will see, it does have an index. You can sort of cheat and use an index with it, but you can also avoid using an indexing scheme and instead work with nested tables as sets. That's what the multi-set operator will do for you. And finally, the vArray type. So with the vArray type, it's a type keyword again, and then is vArray and then you specify the maximum number of elements in the vArray. That's the big difference between a vArray and the other two types of collections. You actually say in advance, this can have at most 10 or 20 or 100. And you also use the different word vArray. So three different kinds of types for the three different types of collections with minor variations in the syntax. 
Now when you define a collection type, you get to decide the scope for that collection type. As with any other type of thing in PLSQL, you can declare it inside the local block. So right inside my anonymous block or nested block, I can declare a type. I can declare it inside a package. So in the package specification or body, I, I can declare it outside of any given procedure or function. And that type will then be available either throughout the entire package body or for any schema that has execute authority on that package will be able to then use that type. And then also for nested tables and VArrays, I can declare types at the schema level, which essentially means a create or replace type directly inside the SQL layer. And that means that I can use that type not only from any schema that has execute authority on that type, but also as the data type of a column in a relational table. So three different scopes at which you can define things. And my suggestion in general is that you try to avoid reinventing collection types as much as possible. So don't be declaring a list of string type in 25 different places. You should be able to create it in one place and then reference it throughout. Let's take a look at some examples. So first of all, a local collection type. Here's an, an anonymous block, declare, and then my type statement. So again, this is a nested table, is table of, without index by. So this is saying, declare a strings list inside this anonymous block. Here's an example of declaring the same type of array structure, but within a procedure. So a procedure is a kind of PLSQL block, a named block. So you can declare type statements anywhere you've got a declaration section. The key thing to remember about a local collection type is that it is defined and then destroyed every time the block is executed. In general, that doesn't make too much sense. Types of data are things that you will commonly use in multiple places in lots of different circumstances. So I would generally avoid local types and instead elevate your type to a higher level. So for example, you could use a package as a way to define a type that essentially gives you a repository of different types that can be used from any schema that has execute authority on that package. So essentially they become globally available types, just like the DBMS SQL base collection types I showed you earlier. Now what you could do is choose to put your collection type inside the package body and that way it can only be used by subprograms of that package. I'm not sure that there's a really big reason to do that. The only uh, rationale for it would be that the type of collection that you've built is only used inside the body of the package, has no use outside of the package at all. So you hide it away. Otherwise, put it in the package specification and then other programs that you're writing can access it and perhaps other developers. And a good example of that is in my collection types package spec file. So download and unzip your demo zip file and then you can take a look at this and maybe use this package yourself. Let's take a look. So I basically decided well there aren't a whole lot of different ways that you can define a list of booleans. This is an associative array of booleans since it has the index by clause. Here's an associative array of dates. There's only one way to declare it. Why declare it over and over and over? PLS integers, numbers, etc. So here's a predefined set of types, very similar to DBMS SQL. And you might say, well, Stephen, why did you create your own type when you've got these predefined DBMS SQL types? A very good question. The rationale for creating something of your own like this, as opposed to using DBMS SQL, is that let's look at the difference between these two different declarations. So call types and my collection type is date AAT, let's say. So I could go either way. They're both defined in packages. Why would I use my own collection type? The only reason you might want to not use DBMS SQL types is that when you use a type like this, anybody coming along later and looking at your code will think to themselves, hmm, Looks like Steven is working with dynamic SQL, with DBMS SQL. And in fact, I've never even used that package because it's kind of old and superseded by native dynamic SQL. So, wow, I guess I have to go study up and work with dynamic SQL. And you may or may not be using dynamic SQL here. If I only use this type as a shortcut, as a kind of a lazy way to get a, a, a predefined type to use for my collection, then I could be misleading people into thinking that the code contains something it doesn't. So that might be one factor to keep in mind about not using these predefined DBMS SQL types. They're easy, but once you create your own type, your, your own package, 
it's just as easy to use one of your own and you can certainly take this package and put it into your own application code base. Finally, for nested tables and VRAs, you can also create your type in the schema at the schema level itself, which means essentially in the SQL layer. So here's a creation of a nested table type inside the database as a database object. Once I've created the type, I can grant execute on the type, not select, grant execute on the type, and you can set it to assign it to roles, schemas, etc. And the advantage here is that then anybody, any schema with execute authority in the type can use the type so it's as globally available as a package based type but also if I did want to create a relational table that has as one of its columns a nested table or a VRA I would have to create the type at the schema level and I'll show you an example of this when we take a look at the nested tables and VRAs in much more detail. This is only allowed, schema level types are only allowed for nested tables and VRAs not for associative arrays at all. Now once you declare your type then you can declare collections that is collection variables based on those types and the syntax is no different as with any other type of declaration. So once I've created my type let's say at the schema level which is what I've got here or at the package level here are different ways that I can be declaring variables based on those types. If it's inside a package I have to use package.type unless of course my variable is inside the package. I can reference a schema level type just by its name assuming I either have a synonym on it or I, I am connected to the schema that owns that type. Otherwise from another schema I would reference it with the schema name dot the type name and then of course with a built-in package I could use the built-in package name dot the collection name. So all these variations are possible. There's really nothing different here compared to using a data type of any other type, not just collections. But the key thing about collections is that most of the types of collections you're going to work with have not been predefined by Oracle because they're specific to your application, like a collection of records based on one of your tables. And in that case, you would have to define it yourself. And we'll see examples of that when we take a look at associative arrays. So some conclusions. As is clearly the case, declare new collection types with the type keyword. It's like you're defining, you're extending the data type supported in the PLSQL language. Decide at what level you want to declare your type. It can be local, which I would generally stay away from, package level, which makes a lot of sense for sharing across multiple program units, or at the schema level, if you're working with nested tables or VRAs.